Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna see some pimple pops and extractions. Some of the stuff that you guys are used to seeing, but I've got some new stuff for you towards the end of the video today. New things that we're reacting to that you have not seen on my channel yet. So stay tuned for those. I'm Dr. Dustin. I'm a board certified dermatologist, reacting and having some fun, but hopefully teaching you and learning a little bit together along the way. First up, we have got gloves, we've got the Q-tips with the point on them, and we are going after these blackheads like a madman. And they're popping out easy, probably have done some good skin prep here, either with a little chemical peel, with a hot towel, or with a facial steamer to kind of loosen up the tops and make these pop out easier. You can see that during the course of the procedure, we are getting a little bit of redness in the skin, even a little bit of blood up there. So it's not the uh, most comfortable procedure, but the result will be really good. And when you pair this with the right kind of skincare, the patient can have fewer of these popping up with time. They can get improved texture, tone, and color to the skin. And there is no shortage of them here. Probably the other cheek looks the same. Had a big juicy cyst there, and that's what's still bleeding after the extractions. getting all these out, starting the patient on a retinol, salicylic acid, glycolic acid. Not to do them all on the same day, obviously, but just working those into your skincare routine will help to give great results for this patient. See a couple of bigger pimples up at the tail of the eyebrow. Let's see if we're gonna go after those eventually. No, there's still so many on the cheek to go after. Now we're moving down onto the chin. The skin looks the same, not quite as many down here, but again, they're popping out nicely. Getting some new Q-tips, keeping it fresh. A lot of sebaceous filaments I see up on the nose. We haven't gone over those yet. They've got lots of good supplies here. New Q-tips, new cotton pads. Missed one up on the cheek, so we're going for that. And then back down to the chin. Now we're on the nose and there's a big white head there. And then a lot of sebaceous filaments here. You see the little tiny ones coming out. Not true blackheads or whiteheads, but just sebaceous filaments that add to the texture of the skin. Younger patient here, acne in those years, got braces in. Getting those up on this area we call the glabella. It's the most common area that we do Botox to and I'm due for my Botox. Finishing up here on the forehead, again, still lots of whiteheads, a little bit more inflammation up here on the forehead. This patient definitely needs a good skincare routine and maybe a candidate for Accutane. Overall, very satisfying to watch. We've got a lot of whiteheads on the ear, sebaceous filaments, enlarged oil glands. do have a lot of sebaceous glands here on the earlobe in front and behind the earlobe. This is an area we do see a lot of cysts. I treated one just last week on a patient. A little abscess that had formed out of a cyst. Not an area most people think about when they're going after blackheads and whiteheads. But I like these Q-tips that they're using. It's a good tool. And the earlobe is not a place most people are going to be putting their retinol. But you could. They've had their ear pierced before. You could use a retinol here. You could use glycolic acid wipes, salicylic acid cleansers. Just try to keep some of that oil down. Salicylic acid is going to get through that oil, get down into the oil glands just a little bit. There we go. This patient has a steamer going on the face, so that hot steam is gonna help loosen up the pores, and they're coming in with a comedone extractor tool to just kind of work out all these sebaceous filaments. Again, these are normal. Everybody has them. You don't have to get rid of them. They will come back if you do. 
This stuff is new to my channel and this is scab removal on the scalp. What would cause this? Well, the first thing that I think about when we see this kind of scab is one, just a bacterial infection called impetigo. This is a strep infection of the skin that oozes, weeps, and forms this honey-colored crust. Another thing could be tinea or ringworm infection. Once that gets down into the hair follicles, topical medications and shampoos will not treat it effectively. You really have to have internal medication. This patient has a scab on their skin. This may have been from a cyst or a little abscess that has dried stuff on the top of the skin. They're peeling it off here. I feel like this would be a little painful. Doesn't look like we're using gloves. I don't know where this is being done at. This is an esthetician clinic, a doctor's clinic, or a barber shop. Just plucking hairs now. If this is due to a fungal infection of the scalp, they really need systemic treatment to get rid of this infection. Topicals are not gonna cut it when it comes on the scalp. And just plucking these hairs. See, I feel like this is gonna cause more irritation. Certainly it's uncomfortable, there's some pain but the risk of having ingrowns come back when there's so much inflammation here in the skin, definitely a risk. This is a lot of scale on the scalp and this type of thing could come from a fungal infection on the scalp, in which case you've gotta take pills to get rid of it. Other things that could cause this much scale would be a really bad psoriasis that weeps a lot, bad eczema, like a bad allergic reaction on the scalp due to a hair product you could get that. You see that sometimes with poison ivy where it's just the skin is weeping and blistered almost. This patient's got a pretty adherent scab on the scalp. This looks like dried serum. It's got that yellowish, honey-colored appearance. That can happen with impetigo. It can happen with ringworm on the scalp. We see that more commonly in kids than in adults, especially if there's pets in the home that are both indoor and outdoor pets. So if the cats are going inside and outside, you're more likely they're gonna bring stuff in more commonly. This is really adherent on the skin, so you can use some salicylic acid shampoo to help loosen this up. And we're just not sure what the cause is here, but the camera needs to get back into focus. You're way off base here, get back, thank you. they're just slowly pulling it off. I mean, it's really stuck on there. A lot of that is just because it's wrapped around the hairs. There's another condition where we get this really matted on scale of the scalp called pityriasis aminotasia. Look that one up if you can spell it. But you've gotta have like uh, Baker's P and S solution to help loosen that up. That works really well on stuff, on tough, stubborn scalp scales. That's a tongue twister. Finally, they're getting it. They're full, finally pulling it off. But the scalp is kind of raw underneath there. I don't think that was ready to come off yet. But they got it. Got some more scale on the scalp. This definitely could be, I mean, even like a precancerous lesion on the scalp could look like this. You don't often just peel those off though. You got it. But again, kind of raw under there. And we see lots of other smaller areas of scale on the scalp. I think they need a derm evaluation. Here we have a lesion on the scalp that's created a lot of scale. And this is the type of thing like I would see a dermatologist about because just having your barber pick this off is, you know, you're not getting a diagnosis as to what it actually is. And the way that, that just pink coloration underneath this scale reminds me of a basal cell carcinoma, like the most common type of skin cancer, which we see a ton of them in the scalp, especially along the part, areas that are getting exposed to the sun. And if you're just pulling off the scab, it's gonna grow back. You're not getting to the root of the problem.
And I think this is just being done in a barber shop. And I don't know how one barber has so many clients with scabs that they have a whole channel. It's like the specialty. You got scabs. Go see my barber. See just how that's raw underneath? I, I worry about that. I think it needs like a real evaluation. I'm just digging into it now. And now just like ripping some of the hairs out. Products I like for this, salicylic acid. So Durkos by Vici, they have a salicylic acid leave-in treatment that's really good. Or something you can get on Amazon called Baker's P and S solution. The letter P and the letter S will help dissolve a lot of scale. This patient has a lot of scale up on the scalp as well. And the yellowish, greasy color to this makes me think of seborrheic dermatitis, which is like the medical version of dandruff. You can peel this off. It's not easy. And there's, a, there's just better treatments for it. Ketoconazole shampoo, shampoos that have pyrethion zinc will help with this. Salicylic acid shampoos will help. But anytime there's scale, I wonder what is the pathology going on underneath the skin? What are the changes in the way the skin is maturing and sloughing off that is leading to the accumulation of this firm adherent scale? And how can we address that rather than just remove the scale and not, you know, just pretend like there's not a problem with the scalp itself? This area has, it just, it's coming off easy. So this looks more like seborrheic dermatitis to me. A little bit better scalp hygiene with the right products will really help prevent the accumulation of this kind of stuff. This patient's got some yellowish, like greasy looking scale, classic for seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. Over the counter, you can get pyrethion zinc shampoos. My favorite to recommend is the CeraVe Anti-Dandruff Hydrating Shampoo and Conditioner. They complement and work really well with each other. You can also do Nizorol shampoo, available over the counter or by prescription. And then leave-in salicylic acid treatments will help to prevent this. Vichy Durkos has one that you can get. We gotta get the camera in focus here a little bit. And this looks like seborrheic dermatitis. Get the right shampoo. This is just one area on the scalp. Probably a lot more areas look like this. And getting the patient on like something that addresses the underlying cause a little bit more rather than just removing it with tweezers in a barbershop. Not my recommended treatment of choice here. The only times I'll remove scabs like this off the scalp of a patient in the clinic is when they don't have a whole scalp condition going on. It's an isolated spot and I think there could be a skin cancer underneath and I need to see what's going on underneath that in case we need to do a biopsy. Cameraman struggling a little bit here to keep us in focus. But I'd get this patient on the right shampoo. Sometimes we'll do a short course of oral antifungal medication to help clear up the fungus and they'll do a lot better. Thank you so much for watching. Saw a few different things on the video today. A lot of these scalp conditions that are leading to scabs and scale appearing on the scalp. The most common things that'll cause that are seborrheic dermatitis, which is the medical diagnosis for dandruff. Psoriasis can cause that, impetigo, which is a strep infection of the skin, and then tinea or ringworm infections of the scalp, which if they're on the body, you can use topical medications, but when they're on the scalp and they're growing down the hair follicles, you need to take oral medication in order to get that to clear. I hope you've learned a little bit of something on here. Hope you've been entertained, had some fun, and guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe on my video videos, share them with somebody else who shares this weird obsession with you, and I'll see you on the next video.